Good afternoon, everyone, or good morning, or good evening, depending on where in the world you happen to be. My name is Joe Hedrick with Imaginate Technologies, and we are excited to spend the next 20 to 30 minutes with you as we explore our newest content offering, Enhanced Pressure Pipes for Civil 3D. Before we get started, for those of you on the call that I haven't had the opportunity to meet yet, my name is Joe Hedrick, and I am one of the Infrastructure Solutions Team co-managers at Imaginet, focusing on civil engineering, surveying, data management consulting services. Prior to becoming a professional geek for the past almost 21 years, I spent five years at a local surveying firm, and then three and a half years at a local municipality. I am a registered land surveyor in the state of Virginia, and I've been approved to sit for my PE whenever I want to slow down long enough to take that test. First, a bit of a history lesson. You know, Autodesk incorporated the pressure pipe functionality in Civil 3D around that 2012-2013 uh, product year. And I say ish because, you know, going back almost 10 years, uh, you know, I can't really find a whole lot of documentation on it any longer, but, uh, you know, my recollection and, and asking around uh, internally, it's around those product years. So, you know, the fact of the matter is it's, it's been inside of the product for, you know, almost 10 years now. You know, with that, you know, Autodesk does provide, you know, a basic library of parts, but it's somewhat limited. And, you know, what we found as the more recent releases of Civil 3D, Autodesk is Im improving the pressure layout tools, you know, with the new uh, path-based, you know, layout functionality. It's really starting to shine a light on, you know, the, the need for more content. You know, as we work, you know, over the past couple of years with, with clients, you know, trying to incorporate the new path-based tools, uh, you know, that that need has, has really kind of, you know, bubbled to the top of, of just needing more and more content. And, and sure, you know, we've done kind of one-off engagements uh, for people. Hey, can you make us these sizes or can you make us this part? But in, when we sat down and started thinking about it is, you know what, there's a probably a, a much larger need, you know, in the marketplace. Yeah, so our solution to this need is four pressure part libraries, you know, based on American Waterworks Association design standards. Uh, we've got a library for ductile iron and gray iron. We've got a library for PVC, uh, polyethylene or HDPE, and then steel. All totaled, uh, these libraries contain over 800 pipe types and sizes and over 13,500 fitting types and sizes. This initial release of these libraries, we decided not to focus on appurtenances at all. Uh, the one thing that, that, we're, that we're learning is appurtenances, you know, with different types of valves um, and, and whatnot, you know, tend to be very, you know, regional um, and, and, you know, somewhat unique. And at that point, you know, we just decided let's, let's get something that's going to appeal to everybody out first and then as we, uh, you know, update these libraries, we will add in to, you know, add in the appurtenances. <clears throat> so there are many benefits uh, to these libraries. You know, the first I've, I've already talked about, you know, significantly more content than what is provided out of the box. And if you look at the screenshots over on the right-hand side, it's just an example of that. You know, just looking at the PVC libraries, uh, you know, for, for fittings, you know, Autodesk only provides fittings for elbows and tees. You know, however, in reality, there's, there's couplings, there's caps, there's plugs, reducers. You know, we're trying to supplement, you know, the, what Autodesk provides with additional content. Secondly, our content is arranged by material, not the connection type. And it was a conscious decision that we made. We felt that it would be easier to sort through and find what you're looking for if you knew that all the ductile iron content was in one place. And then from there, you can make a choice as to what type of fitting um, it's going to have. Uh, all of these parts, 
you know, take advantage of the recent path-based layout tools that Autodesk has been, uh, you know, enhancing Civil 3D with in the last uh, release or two. And finally, these libraries align very closely with Plant 3D libraries, and that's really going to help with multidiscipline and BIM-type workflows. Right? So whether you know multidiscipline-wise, you're maybe doing some sort of a, a, a water wastewater type of um, you know design, being able to connect the inside of the pipe or the inside of the facility with with the outside. You know, as well as we had another scenario where a client was, you know, being asked to do a, you know, a pretty detailed um, BIM level of detail design, and you know they needed, you know, really more, you know, information or, or more metadata, if you will, on some of, the, of you know, the, the parts that they were they were including in their design. So, you know, these libraries help to, uh, you know, to take advantage of that too. So without any further ado, let's jump over into Civil 3D and we'll take a look at some of the libraries. So here we are in Civil 3D and I want to do a couple of things. You know, number one, I want to compare and contrast our libraries with the some of the out-of-the-box content that Autodesk provides. And secondly, I want to do a very quick you know, demonstration of the new path-based layout tools that uh, that Autodesk has been uh, you know, enhancing Civil 3D with over the last uh, release or two, and show that our parts you know work well you know with that with those workflows. So starting off, let's take a look at some of the the out-of-the-box libraries, and this is the out-of-the-box PVC library that Autodesk provides, and and we can see that. You know, they, you know, sizes range everywhere from four inches to uh, to 36 inches. You know, however, fittings wise, you know, there's just not a whole lot. There's elbows and tees, but that's uh, that's really about it. And there's only a few um, in in that. So contrast that with you know, the some of the Imagine you know, content in our PVC library. You know, we we also start at uh, four inches uh, for PVC. You know, but you know, we did include some of the larger sizes, uh, 42 inches, 48 inches, um, et cetera there. You know, also when it comes to fittings, you know, we've added, you know, quite a few more uh, fittings and, you know, each one of these, you know, with, uh, with, with sizes to go, along, uh, to go along with. You know, maybe uh, next let's take a peek at uh, um, the polyethylene or HDPE pipe. And out of the box wise, you know, this is the one where there's just not a whole lot of content at all, right? From half inch all the way up to, to three inches. But, uh, you know, there's really, Autodesk doesn't really provide, you know, a whole lot, you know, when it, when it comes to this, you know, really stuff for three inches, but that's, uh, that's really it. You know, the Imagine It library, uh, you know, certainly if, well, if we, if we look at fittings, you know, elbows, caps, tees, uh, reducers, you know, four, six, eight, uh, so much, uh, much larger or more, more of the sizes, more of the most common, you know, sizes. And then when it comes to, uh, you know, to the actual piping content itself, you know, everything from half inch all the way up to, uh, to some of the, the larger sizes. So one of the things that, uh, that I will be more than happy to provide, uh, you know, anyone who uh, is you know, interested in these libraries is we have put together a spreadsheet that shows you know, every single size um, and every single fitting and, and, and material you know, that are contained inside of the libraries. So uh, I'll be happy to provide this out to, uh, to anybody uh, so you can see exactly what you are purchasing prior to, uh, you know, prior to doing so. Now let's take a look at you know, some of the, the path-based you know, layout functionality that Autodesk has added to Civil 3D. And if we, uh, if we you know, select that we want to create a, a pressure run, um, the first thing that we would, you know, we're going to need to do is select that part list. I'm just going to select PVC uh, you know, in, 
in general right here, and maybe let's do a, uh, a six inch PVC um, pipe. And we're gonna say proposed ground uh, for, for my surface cover. I think we're, uh, we are good for the rest of this. So yeah, as I start to do this, I'm just gonna sketch. So I would say, please nobody uh, you know, grade my engineering uh, per, per se. I'm just uh, kind of sketching fast, uh, fast through this. But uh, you know, maybe if we if we start and uh, you know we'll we'll adjust this later. But uh, you know maybe maybe this runs coming down through here and you know juts off across off site. And so so just like that, you know Autodesk has uh, or, or the way that that the tools works now is this whole thing is you know, really tied to an alignment. And that's that's the nice part about it is is now if we if we change that alignment or, or you know change the path then the entire pipe run uh, will change so that's a uh, that's a very very nice um, nice tool if we were to tell it uh, let's not in this case add another six let's add a four inch um, you know T and let's start to uh, to branch off of this. If I say I want to create this pipe run and uh, that looks all good. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell it that I want to to break this pipe. And we will select that location uh, and tie into our building here. And what Civil 3D is going to do is it's going to go ahead and it knows that it needs a T in that location. It knows that it needs to be somewhat of a, a reducing T, um, the, the six inch main line down to that four inch branch. And it's taking care of, you know, really all of that uh, for us. So one of the last things that I do want to show uh, with this is, is how you know, based on the angle of the pipes, you know, Civil 3D will automatically kind of swap out um, fittings, right? It's from, you know, 11 and, and a quarter degree bends to 22 and a half degree bends to 45s to 90s. You know, Civil 3D will, will kind of automatically swap out um, those fittings for us now. And I think the easiest way to show that is I'm just going to uh, to label uh, one of these parts, and let's I'm gonna go in here and let's label this guy, right? And we can see that it's, uh, in this case right now, it's a 45 degree bend. You know, however, what I'm gonna start to do is just to, uh, to move this pipe around a little bit, and you can see that I changed that angle and it's now you know, 11 and a quarter. If we get a certain point, it'll move to a 22 and a half degree bend. You know, we saw the 45, and all the way up to 90. So there's a lot more intelligence working, you know, behind the scenes, you know, for us. Finally, one of the last things I will close with is, you know, I mentioned earlier in the presentation that that we chose to really focus on pipes and fittings. Um, we we have not included any appurtenances, you know, valves, things like that, you know in our content libraries. Um, we, have, we have plans on the roadmap to, uh, to do so. You know, however, you know, we, we don't, we're not quite there yet you know, with, uh, with that level of, of detail. You know, however, you know, what, uh, what users can do is, is use what Autodesk provides, right? We can use the valves and, and things that, that Autodesk provides. And, and some of the later releases of Civil 3D, I know 2022 definitely does this, um, 2021 dot one of those updates, I'm 99% sure added this functionality as well, but the ability to have multiple catalogs associated with a part list. So this is a way that you can use the, you know, imagine it content for kind of the, the main catalog and then tag on and, and link to the, the out of the box content, um, you know, to help supplement. And the way that that looks like, is it's really fairly transparent to to a user. Uh, you know, just you know, right click and say add, and then pick what library uh, you want it to come from, 
And here are gate valves and, and butterfly valves and, and hydrants, uh, et cetera. So I did want to mention that you're not just locked into one library with these part lists, um, that you can you know, supplement uh, you know, with some of the out-of-the-box content. Now, we, we have received a little bit of feedback you know, from people that say, you know, why can't you just combine everything into to one catalog and I don't have to worry about it? And you know, I think it's too far, cause there's a couple of reasons why we chose not to deliver it that way. Um, you know, one of which is it would just be a ton of content for somebody to scroll through. Uh, it would be just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and thousands. You know, in in our case, you know, with the fittings, you know, there, there, there's over thirteen thousand fittings. You know, that you would be scrolling through. So we felt like we needed to have you know some way to break that information up. You know, and then secondly, it's just the sheer file size and the size of that content library um, is is another reason. You know, the the bigger ones take a little while to to create and, and export, and we were trying to minimize that um, as much as we could. You know, however, if you're one who would just prefer to have everything all together, you know, there's a there's a good way to to still be able to achieve that. You know, using you know, these, uh, these multiple catalogs. So you can create yourself a part list. You can add all of the, uh, the, the catalogs, um, you know, to it. You can, you can just pick and, and, and link to them. And then it's essentially the best of all of the worlds um, when, when you start, you know, picking out uh, what pieces and parts uh, you want to add. So that, let's, uh, let's jump back over. I'll tell you uh, how to get these, uh, how to get the parts. And we'll uh, we'll we'll close and, and go from there. So now, hopefully, the question is, how can I get my hands on these? And you know, the way that we are delivering these libraries is as an annual subscription that covers the entire organization. Right? Meaning, it's it's almost like a site license to cover all of the designers, all of the engineers that would be uh, utilizing these parts. We have them available for Civil 3D 2020, 2021, and 2022. Right. The nice thing about this being a subscription service is that Imagine It will automatically take care of updating the libraries to later versions. Right, so when Autodesk releases the next version of Civil 3D, imagine it will go ahead and take care of you know making sure that these you know libraries um, you know number one are available for that version, and number two will will work inside of that version. You know, also on top of this, our plan and our roadmap is to incrementally add content to these uh, over over the year. So you know, as we you know add you know more stuff to them it'll be automatically available to uh to everybody that's that's on subscription and then finally you know we also provide a very easy installer to get uh to get all of this stuff installed to get all the files over in the right places you know so that you won't have to uh to worry about cutting and pasting and, and this and that you know we take care of that double click on the msi, MSI installer file add your activation code, and we take care of the rest there. So I would say reach out to your Imagine It account manager um, for introductory pricing. And if you, you don't have an Imagine account manager or you can't remember who your Imagine account manager is, uh, that is, that is quite okay. Uh, you know, feel free to, uh, to reach out to me as well. Uh, my information is, is here. And we thank you very much for joining us.